What's going on there guys? I got a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Today is going to be a How to Be a Pro Player, the series where I talk about random elements of the game, either in the form of discussion and give my opinions on them, or maybe some tips that I've learned over the years of playing this game, both competitively and casually. Today I want to talk about indecisiveness in Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of deck building as well as technical play, because I, I think it's something that's very important, and it's something not only a lot of other people deal with, but it's something that I have dealt with and continue to deal with, not only in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but also in my day-to-day -day life, and I'm sure some of these tips can not only help improve your indecisiveness in the game, but also maybe you can translate those over uh, into your daily life, and I think it's something that, at least for me, I, I try to be aware of, but it's something that so many people um, struggle with, mostly because it's a sub conscious problem it's something that you're not always actively aware of and that's where a lot of the issues can kind of come into play and, and it can come with stress it can come with uh, nervousness it can come with just lack of experience there's so many different reasons why you might be indecisive in some of these areas but today we're gonna explore some of those areas and we're also gonna explore some ways that you could potentially deal with them so indecisiveness um, the best way to kind of explain what indecisiveness is is to kind of break it down into areas where you might be indecisive. So for instance, uh, the first area I kind of want to highlight is deck building. So uh, tons of players out there, either when they're choosing what deck they want to play or maybe what cards they want to put in their main extra or side deck, often struggle with not only picking a deck or picking something they want to play, but then they also struggle with the very specific cards that they actually want to play in their deck. And usually that's due to because uh, due to the fact that they want to slim down their deck count, they don't want to go over 40 or they don't want to put a ton of cards over. Even if you go like one or two over 40, it's usually okay. Obviously these days, uh, players are much more open to experimenting with different deck count thresholds, um, potentially even going as high as 60, even without grasping uh, you know, a factor in the game like it was a little over a year ago. And, and I think uh, deck building and the indecisiveness, indecisiveness that goes into it is something that can really, really handicap you. I know you guys can probably look through so many of my old videos and kind of notice that so many times, even you know, in the past, you know, 10, 11 years when I've posted videos, so many times I posted deck profiles over 40 cards, and I think that's something that you know doesn't necessarily speak volumes to my indecisiveness, but also kind of you know shows that you shouldn't be afraid of kind of going over that threshold because oftentimes that, that's usually what happens. Players are kind of afraid to go over a certain deck threshold. Now, in terms of playing specific cards, I kind of, I'll go into that a little bit later, but deck building is really the first part. So, you know, picking a deck to play and then also picking the specific cards that you want to play in your deck. So many players, uh, they'll, they'll just struggle with those choices because they feel overwhelmed by the overabundant amount of choices that they have, whether it's just the, the tons of cards in the game that they can play, but also the optimal cards, especially if you're playing at a competitive level if you're trying to prepare for a tournament it can be very difficult and, and troublesome in many cases deciding what deck you want to play and those cards that you want to play because you know ultimately in addition to your technical play if your technical play is flawless by, by any stretch of the imagination which usually for most players it's not uh you know for for any for any player it's usually not over a certain period but that deck will be all you have in that given tournament. You're not if you if you're playing at that premier level, at that you know tier two or high level, at a regionals, YCS, nationals, etc. You're probably not going to be able to change your deck mid tournament. It's not like playing for fun with your you know with your friends or you know testing with your friends. You're going to have to stick to that deck, and you know that a lot of those choices are going to define how well you perform in that tournament. So uh, indecisiveness in deck building can be a very very big problem, but it can also be kind of an advantage. And I'll I'll probably talk about that later. And uh, the second form of indecisiveness that I really want to highlight is what you do with your deck. So your technical play, which includes the physical interactions that you do with your opponent, everything from your own combos, uh, to making reads, to side decking between games, all those things are enca encapsulated within technical play. And I think uh, a lot of times you'll see players not knowing what to side deck or how to side deck. They'll be very nervous. They won't know, hey, should I pick to go first against this matchup, second against this matchup? Should I side this card? Should I take this card out? Should I keep this card in? Should I potentially risk uh, hindering my engine in my deck? Should I maybe take out a couple pieces uh, that maybe are part of my engine but could still work out? I mean, maybe this isn't the best card against this matchup, but it's a surprise factor. There's so many different things that go into the actual gameplay and, and in deciding an actual gameplay itself during you know game one, game two, game three. And I think it's so, so important that you keep an, an even head amid all those things because ultimately as i mentioned earlier in terms of deck building uh deck building and technical play those two things in tandem with one another will often really just decide your tournament you're not you're it's very unlikely you'll go into a tournament with a random deck you kind of just threw together 
and you kind of just yolo it and then you yolo all your plays and just hope to get there because your opponent's messed up or they brick. Like that's, that's not a very productive strategy and it's not a very reliable strategy going into any tournament. Um, now I know for myself, uh, at least personally, I can give you guys an example as far as my tournament experience all, all the time is I usually just struggle, not necessarily with the physical deck building aspect, but getting to those perfect ratios. I'm one of those people that mostly because, you know, I grew up, you know, going to school and taking all these, you know, difficult AP classes in, in high school and always challenging myself, taking honors classes and taking all the, these top notch college level classes. And a lot of the times when you're kind of in an environment for so long, especially if you're still going to school, if you're in college, uh, junior high, high school, whatever, uh, oftentimes you're kind of bombarded with, you know, dealing with, with things like multiple choice tests and all these exams and stuff and homework and all these other things where you're kind of, uh, where, where you might not know the answer to a certain question that a teacher or professor gives you and you get nervous and then you don't know, maybe two answers seem alike. And that, that's that's a very simple example of, indecis of indecisiveness in, in real life. And in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's, it's not much much different honestly deck building is, is very similar in that regard because uh, you know you might be down to let's say 42 or 43 cards and you might just want to slim your deck down to 40 just to have that optimum card count so you can draw all your cards at a consistent rate for the most part and then also at the same time um, you know retain that high power level that speed of your deck and really maybe you're down to a couple cards and you just don't know what to cut and they both seem so advantageous you don't want to cut either of them but but you're probably you know you're going to need to and you get indecisive you get stuck and and i understand that it's i i've experienced that both in school and in Yu-Gi-Oh. and i think uh Today, I'm going to go over maybe about five or six things that can maybe help you in your indecisiveness both for deck building and technical play. As I mentioned, that includes siding, you know, your physical interactions with your opponent, reads on your opponent, and then maybe even some of your mental play, um, which kind of goes into reads. I kind of just uh, truncated technical play and mental play uh, into one. So... Uh, the first thing that I kind of want to highlight is something that you can actually do for both deck building and technical play. And honestly, it's one of the most simple things. And that is just simply step away if you can, uh, take an escape, and, and honestly take a deep breath. Because I know so many times when I'm playing, maybe I'm in a, a very complicated game state. Maybe I'm in a, a very complex game state where I have tons of cards in hand. It's a very awkward situation on the field. My opponent maybe has advantage, or maybe it's just some weird interactions going on. Maybe I'm trying to play around something while also not trying to play into my opponent's hand traps or floodgates or whatever the situation might be and you kind of get lost in that moment and you're like god what do i do i don't know what to do should i do this should i do that should i pass should i draw should i you know um say set a card should i summon a monster synchro xyz whatever whatever the plays that you have at your disposal might be at that point because you're so indecisive because you're so uh you know stressed out th that strain is is both mental and at the same time physical because maybe you're probably perspiring maybe you're probably you know you got the leg jitters or the hand jitters i know so many players have those physical tells and that in and of itself especially when it comes to technical play beyond that deck building aspect uh being indecisive can very very easily show on, uh, for an opponent and if you're playing against a very uh you know seasoned veteran or a seasoned player they will very easily be able to read that they'll know that you're nervous they'll expect you you, you know you're probably going to be messing up and uh, you, you likely will mess up as a result of that. So, you know, taking a moment, just taking a deep breath, maybe closing your eyes, taking a very deep breath, just, you know, just relaxing, taking that breath will really allow you to settle your nerves. It'll allow you to quiet your mind, even taking a few deep breaths. Don't just take one, take a couple if need be. Um, I know plenty of times when I'm at tournaments where I'll just be like, God, I just need a chill pill for just a second. And I'll sit there and I'll just, you know, take that deep breath and it'll relax me, I'll settle in. I'll try and just start from the basics and be like, okay, what is my situation? What what game am I in? Uh, what what position am I in? Board position, um, looking forward into the game. Uh, maybe what's past, kind of examining some of the graveyards, some of the hand advantage, um, field advantage, what what cards my opponent has already utilized that aren't threats anymore, etc. And you kind of just start to build those things. And it's almost kind of like... A, Kind of like building a Lego set from the ground up, you know, tearing it apart, you know, because you messed up and then maybe you missed a few pieces, you know, tearing it apart and that breath will allow you to settle and in turn, you'll simply be able to, uh, you know, to rebuild it and have it be correct. So 
that is one great option for technical play but also deck building if you're you know struggling i know this is the biggest area that i struggle with it is not necessarily building a great deck it's just building an optimal deck and because i i think for every tournament there there is an optimal deck i genuinely believe that i, I think there's always an optimal choice um both in terms of picking the optimal deck for that event relative to the meta but also your your predictions for what you're going to go into that event and what other people are potentially predicting and going to play and side deck strategies and new meta strategies and under the radar strategies those are all so many things you have to account for when it comes to deck building and i think you know when you're writing your deck list the morning of or even the night before or a few days before when you're testing and you kind of just are set on what deck you want to play but you don't know what cards to pick stepping away you know leaving that deck list for a little while kind of going having a drink maybe um grabbing some food just relaxing taking your mind away from it and coming back to it with a clean slate is a great great way to deal with that indecisiveness and those nerves that come with that indecisiveness Next is also consulting your friends, your uh, you know a group of friends, some peers, and really just a circle that you might have. Maybe you're on a Yu-Gi-Oh team. Maybe you just have some local players and, and test buddies that you like to play with. Uh, I would say consulting your friends specifically for deck building is a great, great advantage. I know myself for many years, um, I, I didn't. And even really to this day, I don't really have uh, a solid circle of people around me that I consistently test with. Or, you know, a group of people that I, you know, that I consistently go to for advice or I can, you know, reach out to and feel like I have that, that, that specific uh, person that I can rely on that'll give me that advice that's unbiased but also at that high level of, of critical thinking and is making that optimal choice for me because maybe I, I don't value their opinion as much. Maybe I don't think that player is as capable of giving me a, a solid opinion. So going and consulting your friends and kind of especially people that maybe are more experienced than yourself is a great option, especially if you have players on your team or maybe at your locals that you kind of admire or look up to that you know are maybe better deck builders or maybe better players or maybe even both in many regards, going out to them, reaching out to them and saying, hey, I, I, I have this event coming up or could you help me with this deck? That's a great option. Uh, most players believe it or not, you know, aren't gonna, even if at your locals, if you have this top YCS competitor at your locals or a person that's won X event, a lot of people are nicer than you think. And I think a lot of people discredit um, other individuals and they kind of feel like, oh, that person's snobby or, oh, they might not help me. I mean, many times I'll get choices or, or questions from friends or from fans and from viewers like, hey, what should I play? And, and I'll give them my honest opinion. Now, maybe I won't be able to devote as much time as I'd like to to them just because, you know, if I did that for everyone, it would, you know, I would have no life. Um, but I think um, going and just consulting with people is a great option specifically to, to deal with that deck building, some of the deck building questions and concerns you have, because in turn, that'll help you maybe consider things that you otherwise wouldn't. You know, maybe someone gives you a, a point about one of the cards that you were considering keeping in your deck that maybe now kind of changes. Maybe that point now shifts it to where, oh, maybe... Um, I might not want to run this card because, you know, people are aware of it or maybe um, it's not, you know, it's kind of out of, you know, it's not really a, a great trend. People uh, are expecting it. Maybe it's just not optimal. Maybe there's a better option. So um, consulting with a friend group, a circle, etc. is a fantastic option. Uh, next is very much like what you guys are actually watching right now. You guys are watching some replays here on uh, Dueling Book during this live commentary replays in the form of just going back if you can watch some of your games on simulators is a great option because that will help you deal with your technical play being able to see those scenarios where you may be messed up as a result of your indecisiveness or maybe asking your friends or people that are watching a duel at locals or when you're testing with your group of friends with your circle when you're having them watch you play um, kind of go back afterwards and be like, hey, did I mess up here? There was a situation in the game where I felt very uneasy. I just don't know what to do. I kind of just picked whatever option felt, you know, normal or whatever my gut said at the time. And I'm not sure if it was right. Can you maybe help me uh, explore this specific situation? And I'm sure that is a great option. I know I, I love doing this. I love going back. I mean, plenty of times in the past when I've done dual commentary specifically of my own duels, I'll even highlight, hey, this is what I was thinking here. Uh, perhaps here in hindsight, this was not as great of an option at that time. It was a gut feeling. Maybe it was an incorrect read. Uh, maybe I messed up here as a result of this. And when you encounter that same situation again, you'll be less nervous because you're, you've are you encountered it and you won't be indecisive about what to do. And I think this is particularly important when you're dealing with combo-based decks, you know, whether you're playing Gokis or, you know, whatever other crazy combo decks are out there in any meta. And uh, I think that's something you guys might want to uh, kind of be aware of. 
Next is just try it and test. Kind of going again into that replay aspect is if you don't know what card to put in your deck, put in both. Maybe you'll play 20, 30, 40 games, 100 games. Uh, get in all those games as much testing as you can and try maybe with both those cards, maybe without both. Maybe take out one of those, take out another one for X amount of games and see over the course of however many games, try and get a decent sample size uh, to see what works better. And as a result of that, that will likely help slim down your indecisiveness because you'll know maybe picking X card over Y card is a better option because in my sample, um, you know, if I played 100 games, for instance, I won more games because I had this card in my deck as opposed to another card or, you know, this engine as opposed to this other engine or maybe utilizing uh, a certain side deck strategy or a certain, uh, you know, game one game versus game two strategy that maybe someone's not expecting and it was much more rewarding than a different strategy I was using. So I hope you guys are kind of get, getting what I'm kind of getting at. Um, or <laughs> that was a very big tongue twister. I hope you guys are kind of understanding what I'm getting at when I say just try it and test it. That's honestly one of the best things you can do. Just sit down, give it a shot, kind of go back, explore it, and that will ultimately, even if it's not the correct decision at the time, you can go back and make those changes. You can make those shifts, uh, especially if you're testing for those big events. Um, I know that's something that I struggle with mostly because I don't, I'm not blessed with a ton of time and especially when I'm going into event, a lot of times it'll be a lot last minute testing or a last minute deck build. Um, and because I haven't had that time, I'll get indecisive about my deck build and then I'll start second guessing myself. Second guessing yourself is just such a big problem. I mean, whether you're sitting there and, you know, trying to figure out what card to put in your deck or don't know what card to side in, or maybe you don't know what play is correct in a very complicated game state. Honestly, it really just comes down to practice, and I think that's one of the biggest things that you guys can take away from this video. Uh, the bigger sample size you guys can get for anything you're doing in the game, deck building, uh, strategizing uh, for your side deck, all those different things, your reads potentially based on how you play against different players. Um, the more times you encounter those scenarios, the more times you'll have kind of a, a set routine of what to do when you encounter those same situations or similar situations and it'll help you explore other situations down the line it'll kind of alleviate some of those nerves you have um, and in turn remove that indecisiveness and second guessing and finally um, kind of just goes back to that very first strategy of taking a deep breath is just remember it's just a game honestly I, I know a lot of players get overwhelmed with the idea of, you know, what do I do? I'm, I'm so nervous. I want to win. I don't know what to win. Maybe there's people watching me play. Maybe um, I, I don't want to do bad at this event. And I know I deal with that all the time because there is a pressure associated. I know for me personally, all these years of playing and, you know, not getting like a premier event win or uh, any major accolades for anything and, and you know, being someone that feels that they, they're competent but ultimately doesn't have enough time to get as much practice as your peers um, and you feel like you should still be doing as well maybe if not better than certain players but those players continue to do better and I know you got to just remember it's just a game sometimes like sometimes the cards just don't fall your way sometimes you know you pick the best deck but maybe just things just didn't go your way maybe your opponent drew better maybe you drew bad um, Sometimes there really is no alternative to a certain situation. So um, remembering that it's just a game at the end of the day, remembering that there's always another tournament, there's always another deck to play, there's always another strategy to try out, there's always another you know side deck method to implement, remembering that there's other reads that you could have made, remembering that sometimes it's just hindsight, maybe you made the optimal play given that situation and just there was a 99.9% .9 chance that you did it correct, but that 0.1% chance came up and things didn't go your way and you know you were indecisive you still made the right call but ultimately you know you got to remember it's just a game and, and remembering uh, at the end of the day that it's just a game will help alleviate that that second guessing and i know i fail to do that sometimes and i think it's something super super important and i and i really really hope that that, that kind of gets to some of you guys i hope it sticks with you guys because ultimately you know if, if you think about it you know you go as a game you you can apply any of these strategies to real life you can apply this to school you can apply this to your day-to-day -day life your job etc and, and ultimately i think uh you know second guessing yourself uh, in some situations it can be rewarding but when it starts to handicap you when it starts to be a time waster when it starts to be uh mentally strenuous and and just stressful for you is really re and ultimately when it starts to handicap your performance is really when it um it is very problematic and i know personally i've dealt with it and i continue to deal with it i mean i'll probably always deal with it to some shape or form 
Um, but I think ultimately it's just so important that you're aware of your indecisiveness so you kind of put yourself in the mind frame where, hey, I need to take a chill pill. It's just a game. I'll take that deep breath. Maybe I'll talk to my friends. I'll go back, watch some footage of me playing, consult some people about it. I'll just give everything a shot. I'll put everything out there. And if it pans out, it pans out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But um, ultimately, remember, it's a learning experience. It's a fun experience for the most part. And if you gave it all you got, then that's all that really matters. So um, I, I know in the past I failed to do that. And I'm definitely going to be continuing to try and implement some of these tips. I definitely got to remember them. Maybe even just write them down uh, on like a piece of paper or something before every event. Like just just to make sure that you're in that mindset that I, I got to keep an even mindset because, you know, as far as far as deck building, technical play and mental play goes, as important as, you know, evaluating the meta is you know, one thing and that is just your, your own mind can really plague you and put you in that uh, problematic situation where everything else just crumbles because of that second guessing, because of that indecisiveness. So ultimately, that's all I really wanted to highlight. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, this video and kind of discussion I know is a little bit long, a little bit uh, all over the place, but I hope it kind of gave you guys some ideas on some strategies and tips on how you guys can deal with deck building and technical play and mental indecisiveness and second guessing yourself um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! as well as maybe at your job, your school, and just in your personal life. And I hope it kind of gave you guys maybe some words of inspiration, maybe some courage, and maybe something you may have not otherwise thought of or given a shot. Like I said, the simplest things are often, uh, you know, the, 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 the things that can work the best. You know, just take a deep breath, chill, and you should be good, man. And honestly, a lot of the times people just overthink things. Don't overthink it. Just start from scratch. Um, try and simplify everything. Don't make something more than it already is. Um, yeah, that's all I really have for you guys. I'll probably leave the rest of this gameplay up. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys check out the rest of this How to Be a Pro Player series. I'll continue to make more discussions like this. Maybe topics of uh, discussion, tips, so on and so forth. And maybe I'll do like a meta discussion in the near future and some more deck profiles. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, my friends. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to this video along with checking out my Patreon, my merchandise, and my second channel. Links to those can be found down below in the description. Take care, my friends. That has been another T-Wiz video. And I'll see you guys next time.